Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venom Man 20 here tonight. This is a video I've been wanting to get to for a little while now. We're going to be talking a little bit about how to handle an aggressive or a venomous lizard. Tonight I'm going to be showing you a couple different lizards, um, beta lizards and gila monsters, and we're going to be going into just different handling techniques, and I also want to show you a little bit of the difference in between dispositions of different specimens. So let's go ahead and jump right on into this. All venomous snake handling in this video is performed by a professional. Please don't try anything you're about to see at home. So sitting right here in front of me, we have North America's only venomous lizard. This is the Gila monster. And as I came back over here, he actually tried to bite me. So I don't know, I was gonna use this one to show you the easy ways to pick them up. Cause in all honesty, I work with a lot of crazy reptiles. Reptiles that you should never even fathom keeping. But if you're a very serious, very dedicated reptile keeper with years of experience, there's no reason why you couldn't buy a captive bred specimen of this species or the beaded lizard. They can make wonderful pets, but that's not what this video is about. And I don't really want to go in depth on him or all the other guys. I'm just here to show you how to handle them and a couple interesting facts about handling reptiles like this. So I'll stop dragging this out any longer. Let's get into basic handling of a venomous or aggressive lizard. You ready? So I think this is about the best angle I'm gonna get. So these guys are kind of slow, and as you see, he's kind of gaping. That means he's mad. So see, that's his flinch. That's, that's what they do. That's him being aggressive. Grab my snake hook. I'm gonna position him back in front of the lens. So, the way I like doing this, I like handling my lizards the way I like handling crocodilians. This might not be the best method, but this is my favorite method. So what I do, he's being a little butthole right now, stop. Is I like to grab him by the tail, gently, don't be rough, and I like to pull them towards me. He's spinning around a little bit, so bear with me. So I like to pull them towards me. He ain't doing it very well now, is he? Calm down, it, buddy. It's okay. We're friends. I like to pull them towards me and slide my other hand up underneath and then grab, just like that. So once again, so I like to grab by the tail. Be careful doing this. Slide my hand up underneath and then grab. Grab just like that. So what I'm doing here is I have a thumb in between me and his head. So he can't turn any farther this way regardless what I do because my thumb is there. Now on this other side I have that finger. That index finger right there. So that's how I handle almost any aggressive lizard. Now with that being said, if he had claws, big old huge monitor slash iguana claws, I would actually grab overhand like this and push his legs in. So see how I have his legs just tucked like that? That way he's not clawing the living crap out of me. Now of course I'm going very slow with this animal because this guy's actually being pretty decent. He's not being bad, he just doesn't know what's going on. But they like a little neck scratches. Now he will bite you, don't get me wrong, he will mess up your world. And it shouldn't kill you, but it will put you into a world of hurt that you don't want to be into. You gonna gape or are you done gaping? Are you done being a grumpy pants? Are you? You being a good boy now? So this animal might look a little skinny, even though it does kind of have a gut. This animal is actually probably older than I am. I can't remember what year this animal was born, but uh, he is really, really old. So bear with me on that one. Let's go ahead and get another animal so I can show you this on a bigger specimen so then you can get a little bit better of an idea of what actually I'm doing. So this guy is a Mexican beaded lizard. So this guy's just a little bit stuck shed up there on his front arms. If you want to volunteer to come down here and take it off, more power to you, I'm not gonna do that. So this guy is my friend. He is honestly a gentle giant. I like working with these guys a little bit better because they're bigger. So you have a little bit bigger of a room for air. Now, if I was to be a bit, it would be a lot worse. I would probably go to the hospital because I'd probably pass out from the pain. I have a huge pain tolerance. I might make it, but it would be bad. He ain't gonna kill you. You shouldn't die unless you have a really crappy body. You shouldn't die. 
But, as I said with the last guy, let's pretend like this guy's aggressive. He's big enough, he can handle me being just a little bit more rough with him. So, number one, if you look at his eyes, they're on the side of the head, right? Don't know if you can see that, I might be blocking your light. They are not on the top of the head. So therefore, if I'm working above him, he is gonna have a hard time seeing me. He's gonna have, if I get directly behind him, he cannot see me. So just as long as I don't touch him, when I'm directly behind him, I'm good to go. So he can't see me, I'm not touching him, just like a crocodilian or caiman, you just come in quick, right there, grab him, you got him, you wrestle him, he's so strong. He's not, you're cool, you're my buddy. I'm sorry, bud. He's like, what are you doing? I thought we were friends. We are friends, buddy. But, uh, so like I said, the other technique that I do more often, but yet again, it's more dangerous. If it's an aggressive reptile, I would never do that. Is I grab by the tail, pull him up like that, and then I grab. Now on this one, hopefully you've seen that. I'll do it one more time just in case you didn't. I will grab by the tail. I will slide up underneath and I will grab just like that. He's going to struggle. If you notice, my thumb is not in the same position. It's now I'm using his leg to keep his head from getting around to my arm. Just as long as I don't come off cock to the side like that, I should be fine like this. This works. So one more time. Yet again, coming up behind the aggressive lizard. You can easily just slide your hands and grab a hold, just like that. Now at any point, if you need to let go, that's fine. Don't come off like that. Whenever you go to release him, you got him. He doesn't have you. Release with the back hand first. Get your front hand out. You're off. You're off the animal, just like a crocodilian. He'll spin around on you. You touch him, a lot of times he'll be snappy. This guy's really calm. So let me go ahead and interlude real quick in there. I guess it'd be interlude. I don't know, whatever. These guys are not that aggressive. They're very calm. Even if you take, normally if you have one as a baby, he might be really, really snappy and show his mouth and he's super serious. If you handle it a lot, just get it used to you holding it properly, it'll eventually calm down. It's like, okay, we're friends, you know. They won't, they don't, uh, they're just like a bearded dragon. They're just like an iguana. They will calm down. Um, any reptile that you work with enough, like he's being a little huffy puffy right now, I think he thinks I'm going to feed him. Normally, if he's being aggressive at all, it means he's hungry. Now, I do have one last one I want to show you. It's the most beautiful one by far. Mm, it's a grumpy freaking lizard. And that's the reason I want to show you. You think, okay, all of them are this temperament. You watched a video of some guy with a really cool gaboon viper that was super chill just hanging out on the table. He might have had a cool gaboon. He might have had a very calm gaboon. Doesn't mean all gaboons are like that. Some animals are just meaner than others. That's all it comes down to. I don't know if they were dropped as a baby. Not making a joke. I don't know if it was just bad handling. I don't know if it's just individual temperaments. Sometimes individual, individual temperaments can be night and day. Like my black mamba, for instance. He is kind of a nightmare. He's just a little pain in the butt. This guy, pretty freaking chill. I've used him for a lot of videos because he's so calm. In a lot of my videos, I will sit there and pull him out and just hold him and just talk just because he's so awesome. But let's go ahead and introduce you to the one that I don't really want to handle because she might try to bite me like multiple times. Let's do that. Ready to go back up? Ready to go back up? That little side snap. You gotta watch that. One more quick little interlude here. I do want to say that if you ever come across a beaded lizard or a Gila monster into the wild, leave it alone. These guys are protected throughout much of their range. They are very rare and their numbers are deplenishing very quickly. So we need to preserve these specimens. They do breed readily in captivity. They do very well in captivity. The ones we have in captivity can make wonderful pets. That's the animal you want anyway. So if you're driving through Arizona or driving down through Mexico, just if you see one, Stop the car, try to stop traffic, let it cross the road, just leave it alone because they are highly protected. But uh, anyway, let's check this next one out. So here we go. This is the prettiest one that I have to offer you and also the biggest butthead. She's got a lot of dust on her head right now because she's been digging. They love to dig. 
But sitting here kind of looks like a calm lizard. You're like, oh, that's a nice lizard. She's so pretty. Yeah, but she's rude. You're gonna be nice. You're gonna be chill. Can I touch you? Let me flip my viewfinder around. You gotta calm down. I wanna touch you. I wanna show you to YouTube. Hey, hey. But as you see, this animal is treated exactly like the other ones, but she's just a little bit of a grump. It's beautiful. You are beautiful, but this is possibly what you're getting into. Now, yet again, if you're handling monitors or iguanas, a lot of my handling techniques are the same thing, just sped up. You just need to be a lot quicker, a lot more confident, and you don't need to watch yourself nearly as much. You get bit, you get bit. This, this one's one you just really don't want to get bit by. So I want to try to pick her up to demonstrate what I've been trying to tell you, show you. Somebody asked for this video, that's why I'm doing it. If I seem a little sporadic, it's just because these guys, I'm trying to get a good video out and I don't know how to go about it. Using the snake hook to bring it back on the table. Opening up the mouth, gaping. So I'm going to grab her front end before I ever touch her back end, once I get her eyes off of me. See, she's trying to bite the hook. Okay, so there we go. Maybe she sees my shadow is the problem. You are a chore. She is a chub. I like to grab right-handed. I'm just dominantly right-handed. So it's just always my pinning and grabbing hand. There we go. So, got her. Just like that. Hopefully you've seen that. See, she is trying to bite. She's being a little grumpy pants. So you gotta keep a good grip. She might end up trying to roll. Stop, stop being a grump. Stop being a grumpy grump. Now, if you read the literature, it might say that it's okay to grab them by the tail. And I do believe that is an okay method to pick them up by the tail. I don't like doing that. I think it puts a lot of stress on the spine. Um, these guys won't lose their tail. That's not a big worry. Like, I wouldn't be flinging them around by the tail, but I think you're okay to grab them by the tail. I just don't like it. I would much rather sit here and have to work the animal and pin it just like that. Just be gentle and slow. I mean, she doesn't want to be mean. She just is afraid. You know, she's scared. She's a scared little lizard who really wants to bite me. Do you want to bite me? Do you, do you want to bite? She definitely wants to bite. I'm gonna show YouTube your mouth, your mouth parts. Good job. Whew. So that is a really crappy explanation of how to handle a venomous lizard. That is the beta lizards and Gila monsters. I will be going into depth on those because I actually showed you a couple species um, and I have a couple more species I would like to show you. So we'll be breaking it up, showing you sub subspecies, I guess it will be. Anyway. I'll be going through all that, explaining the venom to you, explaining all that at a later date. I just kind of wanted to show that, just kind of the basics of how, I use the same grab for crocodilians, venomous lizards, large lizards, aggressive lizards. Now, if you was to do that grab on a water monitor or Nile monitor, it ain't gonna work. They have a long neck, they'll spin around, bite you every time. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. But uh, that's how I go about doing it. I'm sorry for stressing that last animal out a little bit more than I should have, but I wanted to use her as a teaching tool. I just wanted you to understand, I don't care if you're keeping water monitors, I don't care if you're keeping heliderms, I don't care if you're keeping anacondas. Every animal has its own temperament, and some people don't understand that. Some people think, how bad's a black mamba? I don't know, what black mamba are you getting? You know, they all have the ability to cause harm, but at the same time, one of them is going to be way worse than the other one, just for some reason. All those animals handled exactly the same way, and she, for some reason, is just very particular. That's a captive bred animal from some of the best stock in the United States, and she's just a little grumpy pants. So anyway, if you enjoyed that video, if you took anything out of it, please subscribe, show all your friends, hit that like little icon down there. That'd be awesome, I'd really appreciate it. Help the channel out. I have plenty more of how to handle venomous reptiles coming. Not saying you need to, not saying you should, 
I'm just saying that those videos are going to be up on my channel and I want you guys to exploit them as much as possible. I want you to get as much out of them. They're going to be a lot more in depth and a lot better filmed than this one. This was just kind of a little on the whim how-to video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a wonderful night.